Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, I'll be discussing the DC Comics trade paperback Superman Batman, Volume 2, Supergirl. Written by Jeff Loeb, with art by Michael Turner and Peter Steigerwald, and lettering by Richard Starkings. In the aftermath of the great kryptonite meteor's destruction at the end of the first volume, Public Enemies, thousands of smaller chunks of the alien rock have fallen to Earth, leaving Superman confined to the Fortress of Solitude, and largely, for a time, at the mercy of Batman and myriad members of the Justice League, as they've all been conducting search and cleanup processes to make it safe for Kal-El to resume something of a normal life. However, Batman comes to unearth a vessel amidst a patch of kryptonite that has gone into a river and is fooled only briefly by its occupant's escape and subsequent making off with his bat boat, which soon thereafter comes to a crashing and somewhat explosive halt, soon revealing the slightly amnesiac Kara zor who is lost and babbling in kryptonese. Batman, always preferring caution and suspicion above all else, is not so easily swayed as Superman is by the girl, when finally he is introduced to her, which sets the two men at odds from time to time as the story unfolds. Within just a handful of days and weeks, does Kara learn English and several other languages of the Earth, largely impressing her cousin Cal, who takes her out on the town to show her this new world that is her home. But there are hints and rumblings leading all the way back to the hellish and darkness-enveloped apocalypse that suggest this new blood, this Kryptonian girl, may yet fill the void left by the newly tested and easily slaughtered potential fury of Darkseid to become another in a long line of champions for evil. The realm of the malevolent dark side is not the only one that has its eyes on Kara, however, as is revealed when Clark and Kara are suddenly accosted by a horde of Amazons led by none other than Wonder Woman herself. Superman, somewhat rightly and somewhat wrongly, feels betrayed by this, as Kara is taken back to Themyscira to train with the warrior Artemis, to hone her skills and power, which she largely has yet to learn to control. But Kara is no child, a point she wishes to make clear to DC's Trinity, as they three debate what's best for her in their estimations. The differences of opinions, however, is soon interrupted by a boom tube straight from Apocalypse, opening onto Themyscira and unleashing dozens if not hundreds of animates, or feeble clones of the creature Doomsday that once took Superman's very life, all of which serves only as a distraction that is easily laid waste via Superman's heat vision on full blast for a second boom tube to have opened opened up so that Kara could be successfully kidnapped by Darkseid's Furies. For Superman, now faced with the hope of another being alive on Earth that hails from his origin planet of Krypton, and the sudden loss of this newly found relation, it has become personal, to such an extent that the Man of Steel even lets loose some harsh reminders on Batman and Wonder Woman of the losses they've suffered, Donna Troy and Jason Todd, making the case that they'd do nothing less than everything if it meant having them back for just another day. And so the trio seek the aid of former Apocalypse resident Big Barda to usher them into the gates of hell to rescue Kara. Showcased in their approach on Darkseid is resound tactical planning, with Wonder Woman and Barda facing the Furies, Batman enduring gigantic dog beasts and soldiers who ride them to gain access to a cache of planet-destabilizing weapons, which he hacks into with the help of some of Apocalypse tech lended to him by Barda, and Superman making a direct line for Darkseid and Kara. What he finds, however, is wholly unexpected, a Kara who has been so enveloped by evil that at Darkseid's behest she tries to kill her very own cousin. As their throwdown ensues, Batman makes a play for Darkseid, making it known that all of Apocalypse will go up in flames now that he controls the weapons he hacked earlier. But Darkseid only bows to this one-upmanship after handing Bruce his ass, and Superman's only having just bested Kara via the kryptonite ring he'd hidden within his lead-lined belt buckle. Kara is returned safely home to Earth, but it is only a matter of time before Darkseid pays a house call to finish Superman once and for all. The self-titled God of Apocalypse puts up a strong enough fight that Kara deems it necessary to intervene, and it is just as she's caught in his energy blast that her life meets, for all intents and purposes, its sudden end. With his cousin reduced to ash, Superman's rage becomes unhinged and unleashes unholy fury on Darkseid, eventually casting him off to the farthest depths of space and a prison of sorts laying just beyond the perceptions of mankind. However, once back on Earth, is there the surprise reveal of the Maid of Might or Girl of Steel on the various teams and heroes of the DCU, who all welcome the second-to-last survivor of Krypton to their world, as a bright and hopeful future lays before her. And so concludes the volume. 
It should go without saying, though I'm going to say it anyway, that this volume is deep and engaging. Jeff Loeb manages to truly drive a wedge between DC's respective trinity of Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, with Kara fits snugly in between them all, in realistic ways that spotlight their concerns for not only her welfare, but also the impact her existence is having on her cousin, as well as the potential impact she could have on the planet and even the universe at large. Superman welcomes her with open arms and little effort, yet Batman's every step is one made to consider every possible and largely negative aspect to this mystery girl landed on their doorstep, going to such lengths as feigning an attack on Clark and Kara with Wonder Woman's help. And Diana's goal in giving such aid is born out of the prophecies of the seers of Themyscira, who know that Kara's arrival could bring about death and destruction, and it is only Darkseid's eventual entry into the fray that solidifies these concerns. Loeb deftly brings a sense of awe and wonder to Kara. She feels very much like a genuine woman seeking to find herself in a place in this new world. And the journey they all mutually share, though fraught with obstacles, is an affirming one by the end. As to Michael Turner's art and Peter Steigerwald's colors, I can only say that this volume is captivating and gorgeous from cover to cover. From highly detailed scenery, to the defined action poses of the heroes at large, to the facial expressions of curiosity and madness, joy and fear, all being immaculately rendered. Comic book properties with this such a level of visual impressiveness aren't all that common to my thinking. Even the best volumes mess up here and there on occasion. But for me, Superman Batman Volume 2 Super Supergirl went above and beyond the Call of Duty in its story, characterization, and artwork. I'll be rating this volume a solid 5 out of 5, and highly recommend that you pick it up today if you don't already own it. Otherwise, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of this volume, if you've ever read it, and what your overall thoughts are on Supergirl herself, and her sometimes varied incarnations. And so, that'll be it for me on this one. I hope this video finds you well and that you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all later. Peace.